Although I like to think of myself as a rational kind of chap, I have a PhD in philosophy, I have a British English accent, and you know, that makes people assume that I am of sound mind, that I am attuned to a certain frequency which allows me to think very logically and very brilliantly, and this is the great fallacy, of course, because all of us are very irrational in a whole host of ways. And as someone with more than a passing interest in being a rational person, as we all should have, uh, you know, I've frequented many of the rationalist communities online, or dipped my toe, I should say. See, like, I like to peek in the door and see what's going on, whether it's the effective altruist guys, uh, the ones who run 80,000 hours, or lesswrong.com, place where lots of rationalist articles and things like that come out, or the writings of Scott Alexander on Slate Star Codex, or I think it's called Astral Codex 10 now, something like that. Um, you know, th this this pool of people who are interested in way, ways we all commit certain fallacies, ways we can optimise our lives, ways we can structure our decision making to just make ourselves, I guess, the obvious things. I guess happier, healthier, wealthier, um, you know, not conform to silly societal expectations, to be able to think for ourselves and get to the truth, obviously, is a big part of rationality to get things right. And uh, whether that's your career or investing, which is a hobby of mine, or just in your relationships, uh, I think everyone has an interest in being more rational because being more rational ultimately is, you know, what is rationality? It's instrumental towards making the right decisions, to getting to the truth, to achieving whatever it is you want. Um, and one thing I'm interested in is how we get this wrong so badly so often. And of course, so that you can spot when other people are being irrational so that you can not get fooled. Uh, I think that's very, very important. One thing I realise is that confidence is such a, as wonderful as confidence is, it's such a veil over the truth often. If someone appears confident, if someone appears very certain, it can trick us into thinking that they know what they're talking about. So with this in mind, I wanna give you five signs of dangerous cognitive bias so that you can tell if someone else or you are suffering from a cognitive bias that is making you delusional, that is stopping you from getting to the truth, that is causing you to fail to see reality. Number one, watch if someone gets mad at you when you question their belief. If someone has an overly emotional reaction to you questioning an idea of theirs, questioning something they've done with their money, questioning their belief, whatever it is, if someone reacts in an extremely emotional way to that, that's already an immediate tell. It's an immediate tell that this person can't necessarily be fully trusted to be an objective source of information. It means that they are holding on tightly their, to their position. It means they're scared of dismantling it. And if someone reacts with fear and anger at the thought of dismantling a current belief, it means that it might be a fragile one. Not necessarily wrong, but it means that that person is not willing to do a level of revising their belief, of questioning it, and they may be falling prey to a dangerous bias. Number two, watch for if someone says that the other side of the argument is stupid or crazy or immoral. If things, if ad hominem attacks like that come out, certain words, stupid, crazy, immoral, these are emotive terms, they're not based on the actual arguments themselves. Maybe it's Republicans and Democrats and what they call each other, Conservatives and Labour in the UK, whatever, religious people, atheists. Once you start attacking the other side that heavily, it's usually a tell that you're no longer arguing on logical terms. And you've also turned the other side into a complete demon, you failed to empathise with why they believe what they do, so you just go, well, they must just be completely stupid. They must just be completely morally bankrupt. Of course, 
that's probably not true if there's a whole other half of the country or the world who thinks something else and you do. It's unlikely that the answer is they're all just completely stupid. Um, probably it means you need to think, what is the case they're building on? What do I think in retort to that? What's my response? What's the actual logical argument they're making? Do I think they are falling prey to a fallacy? Do I think I am falling prey to a fallacy? Where does my my side need to give a little bit to actually understand their side? Where is my side flawed? Where are my arguments slightly weak and I know it and I need to shore them up or I need to revise them slightly so that I can get closer to the truth? These are all questions we have to ask instead of deciding that the other side are just stupid. Number three, look for people who are thinking in certainties and not probabilities. You know, if someone just says, all right, let's take the most contentious one of all, okay? Let's just say Bitcoin. If someone says, uh, Bitcoin is gonna go to a million dollars in six months, and that's definitely 100% true. Say someone said that six months ago. Now, we would look right now and we'd see that that obviously wasn't true, and suddenly it would dismantle that person's predictive ability. And they may go, well, no, I said six months, but maybe it's actually gonna be 12 months uh, or another year from now with another 100% certainty. When people repeatedly make predictions with 100% certainty, that is a tell. It sounds like an obvious one, but pundits do this all the time. People on Twitter, people on social media do this all the time. People who are paid to be experts do this all the time. People also on the other side say with 100% certainty that Bitcoin will crash to zero. Of course, the truth is no one actually has these 100% certainties. If they did, I imagine they would be leveraging every penny they had right now and be getting very, very rich. Maybe there's maybe there's three people actually doing that. I'm sure for a lot of people they're making probabilistic bets but they don't really know for certain and they're kind of just educate, making educated guesses and trying to put a little bit of skin in the game. But that's what most of us are doing. But look for people who are honest that that is what they're doing because many people will not be honest about what they're doing. They will just make bold claims again and again with 100% certainty. If people start saying things like that, like, I know Trump or Biden is definitely going to win the election. If people say things with 100% certainty, danger zone. It usually means they are just throwing out guesses and hoping that they'll be proved right. Then they'll make another 100% prediction. One of them will eventually be proved wrong. Um, so yes, someone not thinking in probabilities. Number four, look for someone with no game plan in case they are wrong. Similar to the investing example, you know, if you ask someone what if you happen to be wrong about this, what they will do or how they are countering for that scenario, if they say they have no game plan or they just think that's a crazy idea or no, you're just wrong, I don't have any, how could I be wrong? You know, if you said to someone about their political beliefs, what if you were wrong about this? Again, if they think that's a ridiculous idea, they couldn't even foresee being wrong, danger territory. It probably means that they're not critical enough, not being self-critical enough on the ideas and not giving them enough of a sense of, hey, I think this is, I've, I've tested this a few times, I think this is probably right, this course of action, this idea, this belief, I'm about 80% certain, but you know, this is what I'll do if it goes wrong, or this is how I'm hedging against it. You know, you do need some form of hedging in case you are wrong, or a game plan for what piece of evidence would prove you are wrong? That's also another good question. What would you have to find out to make you question this belief? People should have an answer for that question. Number five, look for someone who has attached their identity to their belief. Uh, while it's always great to have skin in the game and actually put your money where your mouth is on a belief, if someone has attached their identity to something, even if it's as obvious as being a fan of something and, and they decide who I am is a diehard fan of this company, of Apple products, of Disney or whatever, well, you know, if they attach their identity too heavily to that and they put the blinders on, then 
it's impossible for them to see when they're wrong about that. When something contradicts that, they think this is too ingrained in me now, this is too much of who I am and everything I present to the world, and so it's suddenly the cost of them changing their mind, of publicly revising their position, risks embarrassment, it risks you know, having to admit defeat or admit you would misplace certainty. People are very, very uncomfortable with that, which is why it can be very dangerous to get in the game of public predictions and, you know, pinning your colours on a certain ideology if you are unwilling to admit when you are wrong. It becomes a very dangerous game then where you get caught up in a bubble, self-reinforcing your ideas again and again and again until they become so tight that you can't even envision admitting you have to change your mind on something. So, those are the five signs that someone is suffering from dangerous cognitive bias. Look at them soberly in your own life, uh, as I, as we all try to, and look for where you might be overly attached, overly certain, too much demonizing the other side, getting too emotional when someone questions your belief. Look at these tales and ask yourself if you are becoming, as the, as the rationalists say, less wrong every day. If you become a bit less wrong all the time, then you'll be ahead of most people in life. All right, that is it from me. Um, stay rational. It's not a very sexy thing to say, is it? That's the thing about rationality, you know, it needs sexifying as a concept. I don't think being a rational robot is the answer, but I think a lot of rationality would help people more in their lives. So there you go. I'm 80% certain, 90% certain that being more rational will make you happier. <laughs>